G'day folks. Well, thanks a lot for all the uh, input on this television. I have decided to commence troubleshooting it. Uh, I've got a fair idea it's probably a permanent problem with this board, but since the panel and everything's in such good nick, uh, it's still worth playing with. Because the backlight inverters, everything like that still works fine. The panel's in a good quality Taiwanese panel. So, I'm going to have a quick look at the... Um, PCB and cable connector on the back of the panel itself. There is a little one there. I don't think there's much, but there's a little board there. So I'm going to take the base and all this stuff off. And uh, likewise, I'll pull the power supply out and re-solder it, even pop some of the caps out and just ESR them, test them with the meter. I don't think it's a power issue because the on-screen display would probably be messed up, but then someone did suggest that maybe the feed for the video processing or video input processing is getting messed up but the feed for the um, on-screen display might be driven by a different power supply or something I don't know, I don't know what each block of this this board is I know this is probably all just tuning um, this is all part of the D sub and RGB and uh, HDMI, HDMI input through that main processor there with the heat sink on it the Zoran Supra, Supra TV chip, don't know. There's a Star RAM memory chip there. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I miss the days of old PCBs having layouts on them. VCRs were great, especially national VCRs. They had a white line around each section and it was written on it, whether it was syscon, video, uh, audio, all that sort of stuff. It was written on the board what exactly it was. So if you had a problem with your capstan motor for example you could go to syscon and troubleshoot it or you could troubleshoot the motor itself because it was all pretty much through hole component tree really easy to find and troubleshoot but this surface mount stuff I've never really dealt with so yeah I might get frustrated and throw the board out but I'll keep the panel and everything uh, even the frame I'll get rid of the frame and stand and just mount the panel on the wall bare attach a little universal driver board off to the side and uh, have a nice little compact 26 inch screen because the plastic housing is only really a cosmetic thing this panel is a sealed unit with a metal frame very solid so there's no real reason to have a plastic frame around it apart from making it cosmetically appealing for the living room but for an industrial garage like mine all I need is a little cover over the back of this power supply and control board and I can screw a steel bracket to the wall that, t that picks up this mount here and that's it so yeah we might make a bare bones uh, 26 inch monitor and all I need is preferably not so much D sub or probably just D sub and, and um, DVI input I don't even have an appliance around here that I know of that uses HDMI my old plasma TV in the house is standard definition uh, the boxes that plug into it are all standard, they don't have HDMI, so I can't test that input. But I know component, D sub, and tuner and inbuilt DVD all display the same problem with the red ghosting. So it doesn't matter what input I'm using, barring those two, the SCART and the HDMI, which I can't test, it's all doing the same thing. So more than likely it's in here, but let's just pull it apart anyway get the power supply off afterwards okay now we've got a pile of bits and this is the little board that the uh, video input cable goes to on the back of the panel I don't believe this is the problem but I just thought I'd reseat these ribbons just to be sure everything looks pretty good um, it's about as good as you get with lead free solder anyway and I don't have the equipment or patience to resold or any of that tiny stuff so just going back on as it is the panel seems to work fine with the on-screen display so I'm guessing the problems in there we'll look at that next likewise we'll look at the power supply fairly cheap and they do have terrible caps in these I've seen I found a few of these on the side of the road that had been kicked and smashed and when I pulled them apart the uh, caps in the power supply were all blown clean open so they would have been repairable if they hadn't been destroyed but this one here the power supply seems to be fine so it's whatever's in that main board 
Okay, well, back to square one again. Power supply checked out fine. It's doing everything it's supposed to. Uh, the capacitors had really low ASR. They tested quite fine. Um, yeah, the only thing I can think is that it's the uh, video processor chip or something associated with it. The uh, caps on that board seem to be okay too, the ones that I did test. Uh, yeah, it seems like a good candidate for a universal driver board because the panel overall is in really good condition, so I don't see why not. Let's just gunk on there, not scratches. So they'd clean up quite nicely, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, I've just got to try it on DVI input, or not, or DVI to uh, HDMI. And uh, if that doesn't work, then we'll write off that video board and I'll try and find another one because apart from that, the rest of this panel's fine. As a few people said, it's too good to destroy. I might as well uh, put it to use, take the surround and everything off it and just mount it on the wall somewhere as a extra slim bare metal uh, LCD panel. Because overall, the quality on it's not too bad. I've got the remote for it as well, so... Input... Uh, DVD's not plugged in at the moment. Uh, digital TV tuner. I won't have anything so I don't have a signal. Yeah. It's trying to find a channel, but... There's nothing else there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when he gets a full-size image. It's not just ghosting on the red, it's also on the green. Uh, if I play back a DVD, that's what it'll look like. So, it's not very good. Panel just seems to be fine. I mean, you look at the on-screen display and there's no ghosting from that, but as soon as I get some kind of... Uh, proper image going through the analog signal converter or analog processor it just plays up so I'll have to find a good HDMI source and plug it in I don't have anything that runs HDMI as far as I know so that's all for that one folks and thanks for watching at least it's worth a try okay well that was interesting uh, I was using a PC input to do the heat test and now that I've used this and just hit the uh, processor side of the board with the heat gun that snow just faded away the problem isn't gone but the snow's gone and the vertical scrolling line's gone green so I was hitting the chip with the heat sink on it which I believe would be the main processor for the panel since it's right next to the connector that should be the analog chip the Zoran chip down there but as soon as I heated this region up like just blowing hot air down there the, fu the fuzz just dithered out and went away. So it's kind of unusual. I'm going to move this TV a bit and just give it a shot with some liquid butane and just see if I can chill that chip down again and get it to do it again. We'll rule out that processor IC. If not, maybe there's a bad cap or another little semiconductor on there that's sort of cracking the shits with me. Okay, well, I just froze the nuts off that processor chip and the problem went away, then it started snowing again. I've hit it with the um, butane again just to freeze it a bit, which I know is not the smartest thing. Don't use butane at home. But any kind of thing that will refrigerate as it vaporises, like this, uh, definitely don't use this near open flames. But, yeah, as you can see now it's warming up, it's uh, starting to snow again. Get some heat. Yeah, so as it phases between hot and cold, it'll change. If I get it really hot, the problem will go away again. Yeah, see, now we're back to square one. And it's definitely that chip. It's not the caps or anything near it. I'm just freezing the chip and heating it and that's what's happening so that board's toast um, 
yeah good panel good power supply bad board so I'm gonna try and find a universal driver board and see what it can do so it looks like it's starting to clear up again oh well, that was interesting it's a good thing I decided to put it onto this and then try the heat trick because I'd just been using uh, the PC input and I didn't notice that little bit of red flaring going away but it seems once you've got a full picture up it makes a massive difference so yeah I really need to get can of proper free spray, the R134A type or similar. Be a lot safer than butane, which you can use in a pinch. You just make sure there's no uh, ignition sources nearby. Anyway, thanks for watching.